Well, we get to have a little early start on this one. Got back early. Uh, last night we pushed her up. So we got it in place. The cab is actually, I got my longer bolts, so I bolted the cab down. So it's not going anywhere. It is where it is. I'm thinking the first plan of attack here is gonna be making a mount for this so we can put that booster underneath, get the master cylinder on. Uh, we'll try to do some mechanical, so we'll try to do, uh, we'll get the lines to the booster. We'll kind of get that done. And do do do. Maybe we'll do some, we'll get, we'll prep the steering column, even though it won't be ready. I don't have the U joints yet. But I did order them the other day. So we'll prep the steering column. I'm gonna dig around, see if I can find a way to make a factor, like a column shifter for it. Do, do, do. And then I think uh, we're gonna put the motor and transmission together and uh, get the motor tranny into place because we don't have a transfer case. I guess we'll have to look at that mount. I can't, I don't know. Can't say I tried too hard to find yet, but. I mean, it's semi-usable. I think I have an idea to strap this to make this usable for now. Not that it's going anywhere anytime soon, so... It'll work for right now. We'll make something up. Get the motor, the tranny in. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see where we go from there. Let's not set our goals too big. I know some folks are figuring I, I don't like this bumper. I actually like the bumper. It kind of fits the truck. I know it doesn't have the right... The right the right right look to it but it does have a look that would make sense on this in my eyes i mean come on it's not the right box anyways <laughs> anyways that said i think as uh, much as i don't want to i want to tuck the bumper in there is an insane amount of junk to cut but i think i can cut it i want to move the bumper in about two inches i think that'll fix the gaps make it look nice i'm just hoping that the winch that I want would still fit in there. It should. I want one of the old school winches, really. I had bits of one on here. I just gave it to a buddy of mine because it was missing too many parts. But you know the old worn winches that had the gear on it? I kind of want one of those. I have a different winch to put in there, but I'd like to have the other one just has a nice old school look, you know, with the cable and then the chain. Kind of like they did. I guess technically they would have had maybe a PTO or something like that in the day, but... Anyways, enough babbling. Let's get this thing lined up, lift her up on the hoist, and start figuring this thing out. What we gotta do for bracketry. I think we gotta plate the frame. We're gonna come up, and then we're gonna do some gussets to the top of the frame. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but uh, we won't know till we try here. Well, that looks okay, like it's gonna work. We just have to figure out a bracket for everything. It just seems to wanna bolt up on top. But overall, everything looks good. The only thing I don't like is this one, the outlets are this way. I might have look up another master cylinder because the one I took off of here had them on both sides. This only has on the one side, so in this world, it'd be good if they were on the other side, then I can keep them close to the frame. But looks okay, lines up there, that's fine. We're good here. We just gotta do a better bracket. Or we're gonna do a bracket there and I might bring it right down to the bottom, just kind of close this in or do something. Well, yeah, I don't know why I feel like, oh no, it should be fine. 
I think we can modify the original one a little bit and kind of use it because this thing sort of sits the bolt holes are just above the frame rail so wherever that thing is We uh, got our master cylinder mounted. It should be plenty strong. It's tied in with the, the body mount. We threw the brake switch in quick. So that works with that. Uh, it's like an original style. I tried to check the original one, but it don't work. So anywho, we got this all set up. So we'll have power brakes down here. I, like I say, haven't looked yet, but I'm gonna order a different master. I don't want the lines coming here because our transfer case and stuff is all here. Um, yeah, I think we're done down here for now. Should be good inside. Uh, what do we do now? I guess so we can actually start trying to puzzle together that uh, transmission to the actual motor. We should try to see if I can come up with a, a fix slash temporary fix for this for now until I can find another one. I know some folks, or one fella anyways, was telling me I can go to the dealer, but they don't even list this anymore. It's a, a non-existent part now. So, uh, or my dealership doesn't want to sell it to me. <laughs> so anyways, we got to work with what we got here. This sits here, and like I was saying before, I believe right on this edge is where, uh, you can see some thread still. So 
I essentially have to get a bolt through there. There's probably enough meat, like I say, I'm gonna drill and tap. I'm gonna put a slug in here, so we're just gonna run a bolt through, because it actually bolts through from the bottom up. What I'm gonna do is find a hollow piece of pipe, something that we can run a bolt straight through. I don't know what I got. Uh, we won't use that. We'll find something though. We'll use this as an example anyways. Oh, that looks like a solid sleeve. Is it tall enough? Oh yeah. So we're gonna bring this back a bit. Just a little bit. Hmm. Shouldn't look like a lot, eh? Maybe we can fill it with weld or something. Is that even big enough? Looks the right size. So we got something we can line up with. We'll dremel this a bit. I know it's cast, but we'll tack it. And then we'll figure a way to kind of booger everything together here so it'll kind of stay together. At least that's the plan. <laughs> Well, it's not pretty. I think it's gonna hold. The, uh, I know I'm for sure didn't do it right, but I had no high nickel rods. I did a big old Google quick, and people were saying you could do it with the 6013, 70, uh, 7014. So that's what I had. I knocked the flux off because my arc welder's hard to get at. And I just proceeded to preheat it I got it to about 500 degrees. That's the big thing they say is to preheat and then slowly let it cool. So I preheated it. We zapped with this. I built up for a little while. I went over to my mild rod after because honestly, I was struggling trying to TIG weld this. But anyways, went to my mild rod, just built up a whole bunch of uh, boogerness around that little tab I had in there. And uh, I've just slowly been cooling it. I've been hitting it with the torch to, to kind of get it to cool down slowly. Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard it. I did hear you're supposed to ping it, so that's why I was kind of banging it with the hammer a bit. Uh, whether that did something or not, I don't know. But it, uh, I haven't heard it pinging or cracking or doing anything weird, so I don't know. Fingers crossed. I mean, it's not, um, how would I say this? I was just trying to build it up. It's not like I was trying to make two pieces glued back together. I didn't have the piece. I was kind of making it, so... I just needed it to, I want it to stick good to there and everything else that I did is, can be whatever, I don't care. Anyways, long story short, even if it fails, it's still holding it, if that makes sense. Like there's still something there. <laughs> Regardless, I'm still looking for the part. So 
this at least now tomorrow I can uh, bolt my motor up to my I can put my transmission and transfer case back together we can uh, clean strip down my motor really quick we can get it bolted up oh man I really hope I have an adapter we can get it bolted up and then oh yeah you need one of these if you're doing them to a uh, 8 turbo 350 this is one of those transmission the torque converter adapters and then we still gotta hodge out our, our flex plate there for the uh, okay I can't do that with one hand but anyways that's tomorrow's plan so I vaguely remembered I had an automatic car here well it was an automatic this one had power steering Kyle swapped it out put that in his wife's car the one that we LS swapped the blue one so that said her car was an original automatic car as well so looky what we got for our truck and on top of that it has like the linkage I guess if we want we got our neutral safety we got all kinds of cool stuff here and it should just unbolt and pull out so I gotta figure out what's what this car was like a parts car at one point I had it running and driving I had sold it it was still a complete project and I'm not sure why but the other fella ended up parting it out and uh, I bought what was left which wasn't a lot but the roof I think I've done a chop or something so I needed the door tops so I did stuff like that but it's still got usable bits on it so it's still hanging around example <laughs> anyways I gotta figure out how this stuff comes apart from a quick look-see it kind of looks like we got some Phillips back here so I'm hoping that this thing slides away and then it's like a traditional style uh, column after that to which we can just kind of yank the guts out
Well, we got our transmission transfer case or bolted back together. Good to go. We disassembled everything. We could just tear off this motor really quick. So that is done. Um, I stuck my snout on here. So these are these little adapters you get. If you don't do this, the torque converter snout doesn't reach inside the, <clears throat> doesn't reach here. So you need that spacer. Unless you have a six liter, then there's a spacer built in and this flywheel is perfectly flat. But because this one dishes out, it uh, needs this. So, and these are cheap. These are only like 10 bucks on Amazon or something. So that needs to be there. The only thing here is these torque converter bolts, they need to, they don't line up. So a feller has to actually slot these holes a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to actually just do it on the, no, we can do it here. We'll just all along this a bit, but anyways, we got to do that. I got to come in here and we got the typical one exhaust bolts broke. So we're going to do the old washer, weld, nut, pop that out really quick. Then we can bolt that together. I did the quick wire brush clean. I'm not really concerned how clean the motor is. It's cleaner than it was. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to paint anything because you can't really see it once all that junk is on there. So, uh, all we did was kind of knocked off all the loose stuff. So it's good to go. We're going to bolt on our mounts, fix that. We'll bolt her up. I noticed I'm missing one of these, so I'm going to steal it from that motor. And I think we'll slide the works together. We'll move it out of the way. I am quickly going to just torch this bumper bracket off, like bumper off. Uh, it should be quick. What I'm going to do is top and bottom. And it's a little weird in the front, so I think I'm just going to cut the front of the frame horn and then we'll kind of clean that up after I get the bumper off. It'll make it easier to get this stuff in. And when I get the clip on, I'll be able to tuck this nicely up in front of the clip so I won't have such a big gap, which is not a big deal, but I like to, I'd like to have that in there. Anyways, I guess uh, first things first, let's get this stud out of here, this broken stud.
Wow, doesn't that thing look right at home? And it fit in so much easier without that thing on. <laughs> uh, anyways, we got her in, it's bolted down. I still gotta bolt the cross member in. Oh, well, the cross member's bolted in. I didn't do the mounts yet because I realized one of the bushings is missing some bits. So I'm gonna have to source out some parts there. No problemo. We've ordered random parts. So what I do have are these headers, which I, I believe they're actually for S10, like a V8 swap on an S10. So I'm pretty much gonna try to test fit these things. I'm thinking the driver's side isn't gonna work only because uh, my steering isn't done yet. If you look, see, it is uh, directly in the way, which is now raising the question how my automatic stuff is gonna work. So I think I'm going to, we'll bolt the one side on and we'll start working on this thing a little bit to see, hopefully I can get the automatic stuff to work. It looks, it's pretty bulky. So that's the only fear I got. But I mean, I can't have the U-joint hanging lower. I have done that in the past. So where, uh, by that I mean this thing, the U-joint was under here and this thing hung over top. Because if we base this on as small as I can make it, uh, well, I don't know, with the U-joint. Let's start with it way up here, like, i thinking, where did we say? If I go right up there, our bolting system is right there. Where does that put us? As an eyeball. <laughs> I'm thinking that's right. Does that get us in the ballpark? Oh yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We're gonna trim this. We'll leave this shaft for now because I don't know how much in and out I wanna do with that but we will cut around there. I'm gonna put the pipe tape thing around, whatever, watch. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna bolt on the other header. Uh, I'll show you why the stock manifolds wouldn't work. Because I know a lot of folks are just get these trucks and they would wanna just bolt these in. And this thing will probably make a liar out of me right now. But for some reason, I'm thinking it's they, they end up hitting. <laughs> Something doesn't work normally, but what? It's kind of cool. That means I got a set of headers or something. Hold on. I need two hands for this. All right. Now, this normally doesn't work. Square bodies and stock manifolds, from what I'm told, don't work together. And we had to do that on the other truck. Mm, very interesting. This stupid heater box is in my way. Come on, you don't fit for some reason. Like you will? There's just tons of room. Why do people not use these? <laughs> Let's take this junk off. Are you kidding? There's tons of room. Well, it must be the other side. It's gotta be. <laughs> this thing made a liar out of me. That's awesome. So maybe it's this side's the problem. I know one of them. Well, I didn't. Clearly I didn't. One of these is normally the problem. So this bolt's on. But it's like right beside my residual, my, my prop valve now. And the manifold is just hanging over the frame rail, but you know what? If you were creative with your exhaust, it would work. I'm not gonna do it because, well, I bought the headers already. <laughs> but dang, I don't know that I really needed to do. Like maybe I'll save these for something.
Well, okay. We knew that was a problem, so let's just work with that first. We got the uh, headers are on, plenty of room. So I, like I say, I think these are S10 ones. For the price, I'm like, eh. I, oh, I can't remember what I paid. Was it like 150 bucks, if that? Anyways, we got them, the collector. It's got the, the sender for the O2. We'll just have to get creative with this, uh, uh, what do you call it? wobble joint when it comes I just can't find the other part fell down so I'm just trying to figure out where it fell it's over there I'm trying to confirm that this thing will be okay because I do want to use the the stock shifter my bob so that sits up there so it'll be okay hmm alrighty well, can we do that? I guess it still works. It might sit a little lower. Because I think it has to come forward and got to go clinkety clink up on top there. The shift in and out of the gears. We could always move it up just a hair if we have to, but I have to wait till the U-joint goes in. We can always massage this thing a little bit, so I'm not too worried. I guess uh, now we're just going to put her back together. Put the bits back together I don't know if this thing is the same I don't think so or is this yeah. actually I think these are the same I guess we'll find out I'm pretty sure this is the same and this one we just got to make the return um, I'm gonna pull the sending unit out I'm gonna do the oil gauge this line broke so I'm trying to see if I can fix that or I might just put a new hose kit on it because if it broke there, what are the chances it's going to break again multiple times? So let's try to avoid that if we can by putting new on. Tried to hook up the speedometer, but it's too short. So I'm going to have to find a longer one of those. I have yet to test and see if this high beam, low beam works, but we'll be gutting it and putting a new harness in anyways. So I do have to pull this windshield out because we're gonna have to put a new one in new windshield and rubber yeah I don't know lots to do anyways for now let's work on that oil sending unit and then I think we'll just try to get this motor all back together with the the harness uh, flopped on top of it for now
you've seen me do this a lot of times, but this is basically the stock sender. We kind of smash out all of the stuff. We drill it with an 11 30 seconds to which then we can tap it. And then now I just stuck in the old mechanical fitting. So now we can screw this back into the truck. I can fix that oil line. Hopefully, maybe I can reuse this. I don't know. Uh, if not, I'll get a kit and uh, oil gauge is done. Good to go. You might be wondering what this is, but I don't know if you followed with me a lot of times. I've had uh, numerous LSs and I've just had like bad injectors and it's been really annoying. Like I never knew which or what injectors were bad. So I decided to invest in, uh, in a tester. So I essentially I can clean them. It's got a sonic cleaner in the back. So that's what I did first. And then you kind of go through all these different tests and uh, make sure your injectors all work. So as far as I'm concerned right now, they're all working fine, but this is essentially like, um, it's a tester slash a cleaner. So I'm going through all the, uh, the different modes on here and uh, basically just cleaning the injectors. They're all, and making sure they all flow the same. A second part of me got this is because I, uh, want to have a more accurate way of when I decap an injector. I had like some ghetto way, you've seen that in the past, the way to do it. This is a little more accurate, I'll get a better flow and I can get some better numbers out of it. So that's what it is. This is what I'm basically bought so I don't have problems. I don't wanna put that motor together and then try to figure out if it's an injector problem or something else. At least now I'll know my injectors are all good, they're clean, I can slam them back in. That's one thing I don't have to worry about. We basically got our intake on there right now. And uh, like I say, I'm just, I'm cleaning up these injectors and then uh, I will be, I don't know if I'll sling the wiring right now. 
I kind of hooped down here waiting for this, uh, um, my heim joint or my wobble joint. I call them wobble joints, a U joint for my steering. So I have to cut the shaft down because I need this thing to taper down for the bearing to fit. So I'll probably just cut this shaft. I'll stick it in further. We'll be able to run this doodad, no problem, depending where it is. I can just weld it onto the column, so that's not really a big deal. But we will be able to use that. I'm gonna wait to do my front bumper till after I uh, get my front sheet metal, my rust stuff fixed up. So we have that over here. And uh, We'll have to deal with this, kind of doll up the inside, we'll undercoat the inside. But I think the next round we're gonna be uh, dealing with some rust. What else is new, right? We had to take a little break from that. I had to do a little bit of work in the shop here, so I kicked the truck over to this side. So I'm pretty much gonna work around that. I realized I have to, this is a little, little noisy, we'll do that later. <laughs> I uh, realized I gotta get a fuel filter yet because this system doesn't have a return in the fuel rail. So I'm gonna to need to get a fuel filter that has the, um, the built-in regulator, which for a 5.3, this system, I'm just gonna use one from like a 99, a 2000 S10 with a four cylinder. They're a cheap filter, but they have a built-in regulator, but they're only a 5.16 feed to the motor. So, which will be fine. it will be plenty for this. Um, I can't source any fuel tanks, so I think I am going to have to try to fix or look into this tank. Uh, everybody, they're like back ordered, and anybody else that has them, they're they are like huge dollars in my eyes. They're four or five hundred dollars. This thing had some gunk in it. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with water, and then we're going to cut the top open and try to clean it out, and then we can basically weld it back up. That's the plan. And then we'll run an external pump and a filter pump and we should be all, should be cherry. I am kind of hoping, my kind of my goal loosely is, as you see the truck, I would like to, eh, would I? It'd be nice if I could start it and basically drive it out of this spot, but I don't know for sure if that'll happen. Maybe, should be able to. Yeah, cause we can reel it back. We'll do the wiring. Yeah, we'll. We'll be close. I think we'll get there. <laughs> so I guess in the end, what I'm saying is, I think this is where we're going to end this video. I, uh, I want to thank you folks for watching and, uh, we will catch you on the next one later.